Good morning everybody and once again welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be talking about some upcoming nice projects that we're going to do on our YouTube channel. Uh, as you know, as data engineers, you will be working with large amount of data, you will be working with ETL pipelines, you will be working with streaming pipelines. At the same time, you will also be responsible for working with third party data, right? There will be times when you need to deliver your uh, data to third party vendors or there will be time when you need to import the data from third party vendors. In most of the scenarios, SFTP is widely used. So in the upcoming videos, I'm going to be showing you uh, everything step by step, how to develop a complete flow where your third party vendors such as company A, company B, company C are delivering data into your SFTP bucket or into your SFTP, right? Then from there, we are going to use Glue to read the data and build our hoodie there like, right? So basically now you'll learn how to ingest data from third party vendors. So we're going to create an SFTP, uh, you know, uh, account and then we basically we're going to ingest everything. Then I'm also going to show you the reverse way, right? Now, say you have a hoodie or a data lake, right? Most common, you're going to monetize your data, meaning you're going to sell your data, right? So uh, one of the ways, uh, you know, you will send data to your vendors would be through an SFTP bucket. So now I'll be basically showing you the reverse pipelines, right? For example, reading data from your hoodie and delivering data to your third party vendors, right? Uh, through the SFTP. So all of that is there in the video coming up. I'll show you how to orchestrate everything using a glue workflow, step functions, uh, develop alerting, uh, you know, monitoring, everything. I hope you're enjoyed. I hope you're excited, right, to learn about all of this amazing stuff. Um, and again, I am very excited to make all these contents and again, post it on my YouTube channel. If you have any specific questions or any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, do expect some videos end to end on, on these entire projects. So see you in those projects. So the first step in the project is we need an S3 bucket, right? So I already have an S3 bucket, which is called again, hoodie learn demo 1995. Doesn't matter. All you need is an S3 bucket, right? Uh, in this S3 bucket, create two folders, public and restricted. Again, there's no data inside this, right? As you can see, right? So make sure to create these two folders. So these S3, um, basically, as you see, the public and the restricted folder. Um, so the partners who are going to log in into the SFT account and they're going to send the files and these files are going to be landing up in these uh, S3 bucket, right? So set up an S3 bucket and create two folders such as public and restricted uh, folder. Once you have those S3 bucket, now we need to move to AWS transfer family. So the process looks something like this. Uh, you can head over to AWS transfer family and click on create server and select SFTP, the first checkbox over here, click next, click next. Uh, for now, I'm, I'm making it publicly accessible. So next, uh, we'll select S3 over here. Next, looks good. And click on next, click on create. Now, my SFTP server is in the creating state, as you can see, uh, it's in the starting state. Once this is uh, done, we're gonna create a user and then I'll show you how you can log in and send files. As you can see, uh, now the SFTP server is online. Now, let's click on this. Now, we need to create a user the, so that we can connect to the uh, SFTP server and then send files, right? So we need to create a user. So if you scroll down, there's an option which says add, add user. And then here I will say sawmill, right? And we need to create a role. So I'm gonna walk you over the steps, okay? So, okay, so come to IAM, click on create role, uh, scroll down and then over here, search for the word transfer, mm, transfer over here, yeah. And then click this radio button over here, click next. And then we need to attach a policy. So I'm gonna click on create policy. This will take me to this uh, new page. And uh, what I will do is I will copy this policy over here. Again, this policy gives access to the S3 bucket. Make sure to replace this uh, with your S3 bucket, whatever name you have, okay? So I'm gonna copy this, all right? So copy that and then click on JSON and then simply dump this over here, man. And then come down, click next, uh, looks good. And let's name this as SFTP demo. Uh, I'm just going to name it uh, uh, YTD policy. Okay. And after that, come here and click on create policy. Okay. So the policy is done. Now head back to the IAM role, click on refresh and search for the name. Uh, should come up. Hopefully. There you go. Now click here, click next. Now give it a role name. 
So we're going to give this role and click on create role. So basically, uh, all this role does is basically it gives like, you know, you can uh, do a get item, put item, you know, list item on S3, etc, etc. Now head back to your AWS transfer family. Uh, now refresh this and then try searching for that role that you just made. So I believe it is called role. Um, policy, leave that to none. And now the home directory. So anytime the clients will log in, right, they will see that particular directory, right? I'll show you again when I do that. So here I will select my bucket that I had. Now, uh, let me try to this one. So this is the S3 bucket. And if you see, uh, when the user log in, I want to basically make sure that this is his root directory. So what we're going to do, put this one here and click on restricted. Okay. And then simply click on add user. Wait, am I missing anything? No, I am not. So why doesn't, oh, because maybe, wait, why am I not able to save this? And I'm, I'm not getting any alerts or error as well. Okay, it did, but all right, there was a glitch probably on AWS side probably, but again, now the user is created. Now, once the user is created, we need to generate an SSH key so that now you can securely log in and then send files, right? So let me show you that process. Okay, so here, if you come here to Sawmill, right, you will see an option called add SSH public key. I don't have one, I'm gonna create one right now in front of you here. So I'm gonna generate an SSH key by SSH key gen minus T RSA minus C, the name, whatever you like to give, right, and the path where you wanna save it. So I'm gonna open git bash on, on my computer or terminal or command, whatever you like, man, doesn't matter. So zooming in, simply pasting this one over here. As you can see, it is generating now. All right, that's done. Now I can view my SSH key by the command cat inside the folder uh, .ssh, and this is the name of the key, right? So I'm gonna do clear, paste this one here. Now I wanna copy this, right click, copy go back and now I'm going to click on add SSH key to this user sawmill, right? Uh, yeah, perfect. So come here, paste this one here and click on add key. Now, fantastic. Almost there. Now we just need to connect and then just uh, send some files, right? So I will use a tool called, again, you can use FileZilla as well, um, but uh, I'm using this uh, tool called Ducky Client, something like that. Let me see. What was the name? I forgot. It was something, ah, Cyberducker. Yeah, Cyberducker. <laughs> I'll leave the links in case if you want to use this uh, tool. Again, you can use FileZilla. You can use whatever you like, right? I'm just, you know, using this um, tool over here. So give it a second or two. Uh, my tool is opening up. So let's see. Cyberduck. That's a cool name, by the way. All right. So I'm going to click on cancel. All right, now what you need to do is when you come to the server, this is the URL that you will send it to your partners, right? So right click, copy this, okay? Now what you wanna do is click on open connection from the dropdown, select SFTP server, put the server that you basically copy pasted. Now use the username Saumil, this is the user that's gonna log in. Now he or she will select their SSH keys. So inside.ssh, all files, and remember, it was SFTP demo, this one. I'm gonna click on connect. Now I should be able to connect to the server, as you can see, now authenticating over here on the bottom section. All right, we are in. Now let's uh, test it out. So I'm gonna send a file. So I'm gonna simply drag this and click on allow. So I'm able to now you know, upload files as well on my SFTP server. And once this is done, we're gonna basically head over to S3 and see if this is done or not. So if I go to S3 now, so probably S3 over here. All right, I'm gonna refresh, okay? So refresh. Hey, look, you got that image, right? Easy, right? So what you have learned is basically, hey, how to set up an SFTP uh, server, right? Uh, once uh, you do set up now, your third-party clients can securely send files uh, to your uh, SFTP. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I would make a video where I do want to cover how you can ingest data from these SFTP uh, accounts using Glue and then how you can also deliver data to these SFTP, um, uh, through SFTP is what I wanted to say. 
So thank you so much for watching. This is the first part where I just wanted to go over the steps or the installation guide. And in the next part, I'll probably show you, okay, now let's say some vendor is delivering data for orders or customers or payments, whatever that is. Let's learn how to basically ingest that using Glue. Now, remember, um, if your company is implementing control tower, meaning SFTP could be managed by some sysop or third party team, in which case you might be needing to read from those S3 buckets through a cross account, right? So uh, all you gotta do is add this policy and it should work flawlessly. Again, I don't wanna complicate any further, just a simple setup guide. Uh, in the upcoming next video, we're gonna learn how to ingest data, we're gonna learn how to deliver data, etc., etc. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have any more questions, do let me know your question in the comments. Until then, see you in the next video.